That's a heck of a bargain, my goodness. 12 bucks, value, a wine blind. I gave 89 plus points and had some structure. I bet you that's under 10 bucks in Europe. <laughs> I'm Matthew Horky. For the last seven years, I've traveled around the world tasting thousands of wines annually in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. In red wines, when it comes to the most bang for your buck, I think this region is one of the greatest in the world. Of course, Portuguese red wines are fantastic. Spanish red wines are great. Chile and Argentina offer tremendous value. When it comes to overall tradition complexity, I think it's really hard to beat this region. And I even remember about 12 years ago when wine personalities Oz Clark, Matt Kramer, and Kevin Zraeli got together and did a little video series. They agreed to. A Cote de Rhone village. Yeah, the Cote, see, Cote de Rhone to me village, or just even a simple Cote de Rhone. One of the best value wines in the world. I agree. Cote de Rhone, or the Hills of the Rhone, is in the south of France. It's a big appellation that covers both the northern and the southern Rhone. Doesn't have all the cachet, the prestige of places like Hermitage, Cornas, Coroti in the northern Rhone, or Chateauneuf de Pop, Gigandas in the southern Rhone. But these are dependable, sturdy, and sometimes complex red wines. The Cote de Rhone AOC or Appalachian was formed in 1937. There's a lot of wine produced under the Cote de Rhone Appalachian, the biggest Appalachian produced wine in all of France. Cote de Rhone wines can either be red, white, or rose. Today we're going to go through red ones. The Cote de Rhone Appalachian allows wines to be made in over 170 villages. So again, it's a lot of wine. Then in 1966, Cote de Rhone Village was actually expanded. That includes 22 villages where the quality is a little bit higher, yields are tighter, the wine overall is supposed to be a little bit better. I think they offer tremendous value for money. In the Northern Rhone, they're mostly Syrah. In the Southern Rhone, they have to be at least 40% Grenache. They also have Syrah, Morvedro, they can have Carignan, Senso, Cunois. So in essence, they're GSMs. You can find a lot of cheap Cote de Rhone's in France, under five euros. The better ones on the shelf in America are gonna be around $15, but that doesn't mean all Cote de Rhone's are cheap. They can reach hundreds of dollars. Well-made Cote de Rhone is really my style of wine. Cote de Rhone are usually medium to full body, and in the hands of a good producer, they have texture. We're gonna taste through eight different Cote de Rhone's from the Southern Rhone in this video. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Let's get tasting. Nice, big, savory wines. We're tasting out of big glasses. We're tasting out of these Orovsia wine glasses. These are the best inexpensive wine glasses I've ever used. I found them on Amazon last year, and I just really like them. I have a link in the description box. You can check them out. They're burgundy-shaped glasses, but these work great with GSMs, barrel-fermented whites, all types of wines, actually. Okay, got my trusty legal pad. Let's get ready to taste here. The cool thing about Cote de Rhone's, especially from the Southern Rhone, because it's warm, because it's hot, because they have a wind called the Mistral that's going through almost always blow drying the vines. A lot of producers can farm organically, dry farm, or even biodynamically. We have a few biodynamic producers here. Since these are all Southern Rhone wines, I think they're mostly going to be Grenache dominant. As you can see here, they're a little bit lighter in color. Let's give wine one a sniff here. <laughs> wine one has a little bit of bread, a little bit of animalness. Britannomyces is actually a strain of yeast, can happen in the vineyard in the cellar. There's different strains as well. They can give off different flavors. This one's a little bit more meaty. Some people really don't like it. I personally love it. Got a little bit of meat, leather, red cherry. Smells really good. A little bit of pepper. This is why I really like some of these Cote de Rhone's. This is really well done. It has tannins. It has structure. It has a lot of complexity due to the bread. Wine 2 is more straightforward, more what I typically expect out of a GSM, a Cote de Rhone. Black cherry, meat, pepper, like kind of like the stone mineral type flavor these two don't taste like don't smell like inexpensive wines again not boring wine this wine has structure has some tannin has a little bit of grip nice little start here not simple Cote de Rhone's at all wine three smells the youngest this smells like bright sour cherry lots of earth tons of mineral notes 
it's really fruity. That's what's really nice. It feels like it's more Grenache dominant, just easy tannins, not really grippy. Now here's what's gonna get confusing. This wine, number three, is not gonna score the highest. It's a type of wine that I enjoy. I wanna drink a lot of. It's easy going, it's fruity. It's just got a touch of grip, but not too much. It's just a lot of fun. I'm trying to score for objective overall quality. Of course, personal preference plays a role in that. <laughs> I, I like the wine. <laughs> Let's move on to number four here. Four also has a lot of bright cherry notes. Almost like a smoked meat characteristic with like a Kirsch, you know, cherry. A little bit of rose petal. Also good. Three and four are pretty close in terms of fruit. Three has a tad more grip, so maybe I'd score it a tad higher. Cote de Rhone's can be simple, chillable reds, or they can be wines with some complexity, which we see here. When Cote de Rhone's are a little bit more complex, they're wines that I think that go really great with barbecued meat. They just have this red fruit profile that I really enjoy. I love Grenache so much. It's just lower in acid. You know, Chianti Classico, a lot of you know I love Sangiovese. I love Chianti Classico, but the acidity, the sourness can be a bit much for people. I think Cote de Rhone is a great alternative if you don't like that sourness, that searing acidity. Five is the dirtiest. It literally smells like mud off the boots. But there is fruit there. There is real clean fruit. I'm really liking number five. It maybe doesn't have the length. Ah! Wine six has like this mineral hit that I would expect at a white wines. Just a ton, a ton of minerals, crushed rock, cherry fruit, hickory even. Number six has got length and it's got that mineral hit that's just nice. I really got into Cote de Rhone when I started drinking better wines because I like the flavors. I like the smoky meat and the red fruit flavors. And two quick stories. I remember I was with my wine mentor. He's a Swiss national living in Hong Kong, really knows his wines. And I was telling him I like Cote de Rhone. He looked at me, he's like, that's just a cheap wine. <laughs> also, I remember one time I was on a date. I didn't know anything about pronunciation. Maybe some would argue I still don't know anything about pronunciation. And I wanted to look cool. I wanted to order a Cote du Rhone. I looked at the menu and I, we were in a quasi nice restaurant. You know, I was in graduate school, so nice for my budget. And I, I was like, I want the, I didn't know how to pronounce it. I, wanted, I was like, I want the Cotes du Rhone. And then the server looked up at me and said, Cote du Rhone? And he gave me this little look, made me feel like crap. So don't do that if you're a server. Wine seven has more, has a lot of burnt meat type flavors. I like how all these are red fruit, but they have something that's a little bit different in each one of them. More black cherry, even plum. This is pretty ripe. <laughs> wine eight has a lot of character, a little bit of volatile acidity. Okay, now the fruit's starting to come out, but the VA hits me really hard here. The volatile acidity is gonna turn off a lot of people it, because there's nice fruit underneath. Warmer weather wines like these from the Southern Rhone are gonna be a little bit more susceptible to volatile acidity because acidity is lower, the pHs are generally a little bit higher, but that's the only one here that had that. I think it's gonna turn a lot of people off. It's gonna be a little bit too funky for a lot of people. It's almost got this natural wine type vibe to it as well. These wines aren't gonna have super high scores, but don't let that detract you. These wines are not priced super high. A lot of them are, are really drinkable. Like I have some wines here in the high 80s that I really wanna drink a lot of because they're so easy going. I could see myself opening them up on any Tuesday, Wednesday night, just sipping on them with pizza or by themselves. Wine eight. 87 points. It had the volatile city. It was a little bit funky. I, I thought it was okay, but it's more natural wine bar type of style, which I don't think everybody's gonna enjoy. So I think that's what might turn a lot of people off. Let's take a look here though. Let's see what it is. Maybe it's maybe it's inexpensive. Wow! I really like this producer too. This is the Boisson. This is the Cote du Rhone 2021. 17 bucks. Grenache Syrah, Carignan, Sanso, Morvedra. Not all these have the great breakdown on the back. This is organic. If you were looking for European wines, you want to look for this little leaf on the back. This means it's ecological or it's organically certified. 17 bucks. Very good producer of Chiron. One of their Chiron showed really nice in an upcoming video that you'll see. To me, that was the wine that was the least enjoyable out of this bunch. Next up, wine number five. It was the one where I smelled, and I said it smelled dirty. It smelled almost like dirt off the shoe, but still had some clean fruit. I thought the complexities in the nose were fabulous. I really enjoyed drinking it. I gave it 88 points though, because the length, it didn't have the length of a super fine wine. But that being said, I think it's super enjoyable. I would really like to drink some of these wines. You know, I end up giving a lot of samples away to my cousins or maybe I dump them down the drain or family members. These I think I will keep and I'll just drink them because they're just nice wines to be sipping on when you don't have want to have to think. And some people don't want a long finish. Some people want the wine to kind of disappear after they drink it. Anyways, 
88 points. Like I said, it was only a finish that I would want a little bit longer, but I'm still gonna drink it. I'm gonna enjoy it. This is the Domaine de la Mordore. This is the Cote de Rhone 2021 Grenache Senso and Syrah. 15 bucks. I think this wine in Europe probably is gonna be closer to 10 euros. This is a biodynamic producer. There are some biodynamic certifications in Europe. Demeter is one of them. You wanna look for this logo on the back. Nice wine, I'm gonna enjoy drinking it. And since it's biodynamic, it means it's good for you, right? It's, as my friend says, healthy wine. <laughs> Next up, we have wine number four. Remember wine three and four were the brightest fruit flavors? Three and four are pretty close in terms of fruit. Three has a tad more grip, so maybe I'd score it a tad higher. Real clean fruit, bright, cherry, fruity. I gave it 88 plus points. Again, not, not it's not a 90 point score, but again, I'm gonna be drinking this wine. I think it's lovely, something that you don't really have to think about. This is another biodynamic producer, this is the Monterius Lamouse Papille. This is 80% Grenache, it says on the back, 20% Syrah. Biodynamic producer, 22 bucks. Lovely fruity wine, what can I say? I actually visited this producer a couple of years ago. They are hardcore biodynamic, not only in the wine, but how they live their life. A lot of biodynamic producers I've been with, I'm sitting down, they're drinking soda and eating pizza, but not these people. They were living life biodynamically. Wine number seven, the smoked meat plum. It was kind of riper, but the smoked meat flavor is really nice. The grippy tannins are really kind of what elevated it a little bit in my mind. I gave it 89 points. I thought it was very good. Smoky meat flavors like what you're gonna get out of these wines from the Southern Rhone. What do we got here? This is the Andre Brumel Cote de Rhone Village Cuvée Sabrine, 19 bucks. So this is a Cote de Rhone Village, supposed to be a little bit better. I saw that with the tannins here. One of my favorite producers of Chateauneuf de Pop, by the way. Doesn't have a great breakdown, but at 19 bucks, gonna give some smoked meat flavors like complexity. Has enough tannin to go with meat. Wine three, I felt like it was super fruity. It might have been the youngest wine, but it had tannin. Remember, I was going back and forth between wine number three and four because they were both more on the fruity end. Three, when I tasted it side by head, just to add just a touch more tannins. That's why I gave it a slightly higher score, 89 plus points. Let's take a look here. As I knock my microphone off. <laughs> All sorts of fun things are happening here today. This is the Domaine de la President. This is the Cote de Rhone. This is 12 bucks. 50% Grenache, 35% Syrah, 10% Carignan, 5% Morved. 12 bucks. Value, a wine blind I gave 89 plus points and had some structure. I, I mean, I bet you that's under 10 bucks in Europe. <laughs> that's crazy. That's a heck of a bargain, my goodness, 12 bucks. And I know that's available, I think at Total Wine and More across America, never mind. Okay, wine number two, this is all these next three wines I gave above 90 points, which I think is super a big deal, especially for a Cote de Rhone. Number two, meat, pepper, black fruit, more straightforward, but it has some tannin, had some structure. This is just, it's a wine that I would typically expect a Cote de Rhone, a Southern Rhone wine to taste like, to me, it could even be some kind of crew, maybe even vaqueras. It, that's the type of wine it reminds me of. Let me take a look here. This is a very good producer in Chiron. This is the Domaine Recho Terre de Galais, the land of Galais stones, kind of like Chateauneuf de Pop. 2020, 25 bucks. No great breakdown. I'm, I think it's probably Grenache and Syrah. I bet you there's a lot of Syrah in this because Chiron Syrah does pretty well. I know they're more minimal intervention because they show off their wines at the Raw Wine Fair in London and New York City, so you're probably gonna see them at hipper wine bars. Very good stuff. Okay, the next one, 90 plus points. It's gonna be a super divisive wine. It has some bread. That's what I'm talking about. It has some of that stinkiness in it, not, which not everybody's gonna like. Of course, I knew what these wines were before I bagged them, before I tasted them. I think I know what this is. Let's take a look. This is the Chateau Pegot. This is the Setier Cote de Village. This is owned by Domaine Pegot, some one of the more famous Chateau de Pops that has that bready signature style. 1999, 60% Grenache, 20% Syrah, 20% Morvedre. This is 2020. I've had this wine in the past. If you want a taste of Chateauneuf de Pop, a taste of the Pagot Chateauneuf de Pop style, you don't want to break the bank, this is a great bargain. I say jump right in. Number six 
it was just mineral. It had like the minerality, almost of like a Riesling of a, of a high quality white wine. Length, just really pure, pure, clean fruit. 91 points. Let's take a look here. This, <laughs> this is the Domaine Galouval, Le Coq Volant, the Cote d'Iron Village Rouge 2020. It says Syrah mostly and Grenache. I'm surprised it would be more Grenache, 14% alcohol. Again, 15 bucks, 91 points. That's a lot of value. <laughs> Tell me, do you like meaty red wines? Do you like wines from the Southern Rhone? What do you think of Cote du Rhone? Do you think of them as just cheap wines or do you think of it as high quality stuff too? One of the more exciting tastings, no, in everything from 12 to 25 bucks, go out and drink some Cote du Rhone, guys. Thanks a lot. I'll see you soon.